Think your memory's pretty sharp? Well, as it turns out, there are seven different ways that your memory could be totally jacked up. Needless to say, our memories are not set in stone. We have several different types of memories working at once, and there are a number of ways that they can screw up on us. Harvard psychologist Daniel Schachter actually divides these into seven key categories, which he calls the seven sins of memory. Upburst, transience. This is a pretty easy one to understand because we experience it all the time. The idea here is that our memories degrade over time. It's one thing to remember what we had for lunch yesterday, another to remember what we had a week ago, a month ago, or a year ago. Upnut's absent-mindedness, and uh, this is one that we all have experience with as well, and the classic example here lost keys. It's because you don't uh, apply enough mental energy to creating that memory, to encoding that memory, so then when you try and remember where you set your keys, you have no clue. Up next, blocking. And I know that you're familiar with this one as well, because uh, you know that situation where you're trying to remember that actor who was in that movie about the sword with the thing and the stuff, and it's just on the tip of your tongue and you just cannot remember his name? That is blocking. You know it, you know you know it, you know that memory's in there somewhere, but another memory is getting in the way of recall. All right, number four is a doozy, misattribution. This is one where you have the memory, but the memory's a little skewed on where it came from. There are three really core places that this can occur. First of all, misattribution of Faces. Like, for instance, there's a police lineup. You recognize one of the faces, but you don't recognize uh, where it's from. You, uh, you think you saw one person here when you really saw them somewhere else. Another is misattribution of facts. You have a cool factoid kicking around your head. You're telling everybody at a party about it. You think that you heard it on the news or you read it in a book, but in reality, uh, some buddy of yours told you. It, so it ends up being bogus and you get into all sorts of trouble. And misattribution errors also occur regarding imagination versus reality. Did I imagine I did that or did I ma imagine that that happened? Did I dream that or did that actually occur? Number five is suggestibility. And uh, this one's kind of nefarious because uh, we all like to think that our memories are our own, that nobody else is messing with them. But as it turns out, of course, our memories are, are very susceptible to, uh, to change, and that change can come from an outside force in the form of suggested information. An example of this would be, uh, let's say that you're in a, in a car wreck in the middle of the day, and uh, you have your own version of what happened, your own uh, account of, of the wreck, okay? That's the memory in your head. But then you end up, say, maybe reading a little uh, snippet in the newspaper about the wreck. Now this, there's new information about the event, and without even thinking about it, you incorporate that into your story of what happened, and that becomes the memory you recall. Number six is bias. And uh, the idea here is that you're letting your current feelings about the world and your situation in it color your memories of things that occurred in the past. An example of this would be uh, looking back at an old job you used to have. Now, when you actually had that job, it was really not a good time. But then as the years pass, you grow more and more nostalgic about that time. And finally, we have persistence. And I hate to end things on a, on a, on a real downer, but uh, persistence memories uh, tend to have a really uh, dark effect on us. And they range from say that stupid thing that you said at a party, you know, two years, ten years ago even, all the way up to truly traumatic events, like things suffered in, uh, in say, a war zone that just keep uh, pushing their way into your mind uh, as you're trying to live your daily life. And if left untreated, these can turn into serious phobias or post-traumatic stress. So there you have it, Daniel Schachter's Seven Sins of Memory. And I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about all this. Uh, which ones have you experienced? And what are some specific examples that you'd like to share? You can leave a comment below, you can leave a video response, and and don't forget to subscribe for even more mind-blowing videos.